possessing a mysterious amulet, four heroes, desperate to escape the dark elements of their past, find themselves drawn into a high-level power struggle sought after by fallen deities and their minions. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himvar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review for Scott Siansen's Shadowdale. Shatterdale is the first book of the Avatar series, which was originally a trilogy but later expanded to five books. It was written by Scott Siansen, though also originally it was published under the pen name Richard Allinson. There is an Advanced Dungeons Dragons module of the same name that corresponds with the events of this book. The story starts with the gods and goddesses of the Forgotten Realms gathered together by Lord Ayo. They are the target of his wrath, for some of them have stolen the Tablets of Fate. As a result, the Avatar crisis ensues as the gods are cut off from their realms and godhood, so prayers and magic go unanswered and become unreliable, while the gods are made to walk the planetorial and mortal Avatar form. The only one not cast down is Helm, god of guardians. The year is 1358 of Dale Reckoning, and so begins the Time of Troubles, also called the Arrival, the Gods' War, and the Avatar Crisis. This is also the beginning of the era of upheaval, which will end over 100 years later with the Second Sundering. With the deities being cast out, we first see Mistra, goddess of magic, try to access the Weave, which in a way is her own body or body of her godhood, which all magic comes from, which is called the art in this case. Unsurprisingly, she fails, but this is just a taste of what is to come. Then Bane, god of hate, terror, and tyrannical oppression, lands in Zental Keep and takes an avatar as he sets about his malevolent plan to acquire the Tablets of Fate. He wants these tablets so he can take down the overgod Lord Ao himself. Near the city of Arabel and Cormir, the mage Midnight awakens to find stains not as she left them. Most notably, she has a strange amulet around her neck. Her and three other heroes find themselves in the midst of the power struggle of the deities and their minions. One of the others is Kelimvor, a sellsword warrior also in Arabel. During the events of their arrival, he is a little moody and not much of a people person, but still honorable and pretty average in his temperament, besides his glaring misogyny, which is kind of out of place in the Forgotten Realms. He is acquainted with Siric, as they recently went after the artifact, the Ring of Winter. He is approached by a starving waif on the streets, who seems to have a quest in mind for him. Zirik himself is a thief turned mercenary who was raised in Zental Keep, though did spend some time in his childhood in Symbia as well. He was honestly my favorite character, which is funny if you know what becomes of him in later Forgotten Realms lore. And then we have Adon, or Adon, who is a cleric of Sune Firehair, goddess of beauty. He is familiar with Sirik in Kelimvor as he was also used by the Lady Lord Myrmin Lal, who is the ruler of Arabel, to bring down a conspiracy recently. Adon is certainly vain and a little arrogant, and foolish been about what I expected from a priest of Firehair. I found Siansen's descriptions of simpler character actions to be written perfectly, where I was getting imagery for mundane things I often don't get while reading books. The characters are all decently explored too, for example, finding out more about Kelimvor's past as the story goes along. The pacing is a little slow, for example chapter 6 really dragged, but chapter 7 is a lot faster. This isn't too surprising as it's your typical quest from point A to B to C to D to E. Now I wish there was a little bit more to this rather than trying to get from point A to Z, but it's just what it is and it's not bad, it's kind of classic typical D&D or even just classical typical heroic fantasy fair. There are a decent amount of deities talked about, with only the most basic of descriptions in some cases, so those unfamiliar with the Pantheon may be a little lost with the mention of gods and goddesses. Divine magic only works for clerics within a mile of their deities, avatars, while arcane magic that normally comes from Mistra, goddess of magic, and her weave is terribly inconsistent and dangerous to use, while some are completely without magic. That normally would have lots at the disposal. The gods mostly at play here are Mistra, Bane, and Merkel, Lord of the Dead, as well as a little bit of Helm, 
who is guarding the way back to the plane so the gods just don't run back to where they were before. This conflict really gets heated about the halfway point, and that made the book finally hold more of my attention as it wasn't quite gripping it at first. As the back of the book states, the party wants to eventually get to Elminster in Shadowdale, hence the title of the book. Those two things have me thinking a majority of the book would be in Shadowdale, but only the last bit actually is, and we do get some bigger combat scenes there as well. The party goes from Arabelle to Castle Kilgrave to Tilverton to Shadow Gap to Spider Haunt Woods before finally reaching the titular place. There is also a romantic relationship, which I didn't really care for, as one of the people in the relationship, which I won't spoil, wasn't really a good romantic prospect in my mind. Also, the story does end with a cliffhanger that left me saying, what the heck? It's overall interesting to get an idea, especially of Kelimvor's past, a little bit of Cyrix, and a little bit of Adon. He has definitely, Adon definitely has some really good character development. And I like Midnight, though, probably as a character decently well, though I will question some of her decisions. So Cyrix and Midnight are probably my favorites. That being said, I will also question Sanson's choice of writing. At one moment, he uses the word Spanish moss, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's moss, it's popular, and I mean, you can see it in some places in the United States and other parts of the world, probably. And it just felt super out of place considering the fact that it has the name Spanish and it's, I felt like he could have just said moss, you know, hanging from the trees or something like that. Like, it, I don't feel like it would have been that hard. And it definitely brought me out of the story because I was like, Spain doesn't exist in this world. Like, who would look at this and say, oh, that's Spanish moss? Like, what, what's Spain? What, what is Spanish? Like, anyways, that's one complaint. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, I did read this with Tasky from Le Reverie de Tasky, and I think he enjoyed it. And maybe we'll do a discussion video on it at some point when I find time. I do plan on getting to the second book in the series, Tantris, soon. But anyways, this is Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.